Today on Coffee Talk Moms discussion is about the impacts of COVID-19 that it has on the neighborhood small businesses. Uh, as a small business owner myself, you know, having the day-to-day, -day, really a day processing the day-to-day -day of what's going on around me um, and choosing to have that growth mindset, which is a challenge in itself to decide, hey, this is the way that I'm gonna think. Um, but, and, and to be intentionally, uh, to be positive intentionally every single day is a challenge, but that's something that you have to put in your mindset that you want to do. Um, today we invited Margaret uh, Vinson, top realtor producer at uh, Martha Turner and champion for small businesses in the surrounding areas and even in the West University area, um, to share with us some of the challenges she's faced and what solution she has that has worked for her. Um, you know, I met Margaret, I would say maybe a month ago at uh, one of the small networking events at Scott and my, uh, uh, Scott and Molly's, and it was such a pleasure to meet her then, and it's a pleasure that you're on Coffee, uh, you've agreed to join us on Coffee Talk Moms today, so thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yes, thanks, Margaret. Um, so I've attended numerous networking events um, that Margaret has um Thrown, and I've met so many people that have now become clients and friends, and um, you've done such an amazing job, and you've been such a champion for local businesses um, through these events, and then also through your Small Business Saturday. And I just wanted to, you know, kind of get inside your mind and learn how and why is it so important to you to support local businesses in our area. Well, I, I don't know. I've always been passionate about small businesses, people that put their heart and soul into starting a business. And I just want to root for them. I want to stand with them. I want to support them. And it's just, it's always been a passion for me. And so about 10 years ago, I um, heard, you know, American Express doing the Small Business Saturday. And I thought, oh my God, I, I love this. And so I signed up to be the neighborhood champion for Small Business Saturday. And so I've been doing that for 10 years now. And then I started thinking about, um, you know, how else can I help to promote the neighborhood small businesses? So we started these informal get togethers with, with people in the neighborhood who either own a small business, whether it's a storefront or otherwise, or their referral based business. And the whole goal of it is to have neighbors supporting each other in whatever that business endeavor is across the industry. And it's just been you know, so much fun to, to meet so many different business owners and, and to know that you know, these are the people that I run into at the grocery store and, and somehow, some way I get to support them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So, you know, business survivor tips, that's what every business owner want to know, right? Uh, and being innovative during this time. Uh, you know, Huntington for 42 years have been a brick and mortar organization and students had to come in and get their tutoring services. And now within a yeah. week, uh, time we've had to build an infrastructure where literally we're now online offering exam prep and, and tutoring. Um, so being innovative is something that I think I've experienced over the last few weeks and it's been extremely stressful, um, but worth every bit of it. So what are some tips and strategies would you recommend for business owners to think outside that box to be able to still provide right. the services that they that they have and that they can offer to the community? Well, you know, I think the number one thing that I'm trying to remind myself is that this is the ultimate lack of control, right? I'm kind of a control freak. And, and in this situation, it is 100% out of my control, except for I do have control of, of whatever actions I choose to take, right? So I can lay down and say, oh my God, throw my hands up in the air. But the reality is that there's a lot of really positive actions that I can take. And so the real estate business, I mean, it's, it's slowed down quite a bit. People, you know, buyers are kind of um, putting a pause on their search. Um, but those that really need to buy right now, there's, there's ways that we're using technology just like you are to, to, you know, still allow showings, you know, the virtual showings or uh, virtual tours. Um, but it's something that we all have to think through and, one of the things that I'm really trying to use this downtime with is is to better improve my own skill set. And so where I'm, I'm slow right now, which is typically peak real estate season, I'm spending a lot of time doing 
online educational classes, things that I never have time to do. Um, because when this is lifted, you know, I, I want to be able to add even more value to my clients. And so using my time today to think outside the box, but I want to tell you a really fantastic, um, inspiring leadership story. So I worked for Martha Turner Sotheby's and prior to getting into real estate, I had 25 year career in the investment industry. And I can say without a doubt that Martha Turner is the best leader, most inspiring leader I've ever had. And a lot of people don't know this, but Martha started her brokerage business, started her first business in 1981 when the country was in a deep recession and mortgage rates were at 18%. I mean, who the heck is buying houses when the mortgage rates are at 18%? So, you know, there were so many things, so many signs that said, Martha, this is not the time to be starting your own real estate business. Yeah. But you know what? She, she did it. She jumped in and, you know, for years now, Martha Turner Sotheby's has been the number one broker in town. And I just yeah, think I that think. that is so inspiring that we think that when the cards are, are you know, against us, there is, there's opportunity and we have to be innovative. We have to think about, you know, to, to see where those opportunities might exist. So I'm going to show you, uh, hopefully you can see this. So yeah. this yeah, is, this, this is a card that I keep with me. It's a bookmark. Take a screenshot. It's really awesome. Um, it is Martha Turner's 10 steps for excellence in your life. And I was reading this again today and you know, thinking about what, I, what to say on this, um, this call. And oh my God, these things are so true today. And the first one is put God first. Yeah. The second is believe in yourself. Third is be flexible. I like that one is like, yes, we have to be so flexible right now. And four is be prepared for opportunities. Like what, what, where, where there's change, there's opportunity right now. Um, and so I don't know what those opportunities are for you, but you know, seek them. Uh, five is love what you do. Six, have unlimited imagination. Seven, open yourself to change. Eight, enjoy every day. Nine, learn to forgive. And 10, take charge of your life. Oh. That's inspirational. I love that. Yeah, I just thought those were so appropriate for for today. And, and, you know, I think that, so I guess those are my survival tips, you know, for, for, uh, for the COVID-19, you know, these, these 10 things, right? Yeah. That's incredible. You always give me goosebumps. So I'm Wendy, like every time, you know, we talk, it's just, you know, just everything makes so much sense. Um, so I love those. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to make a copy for my house. And no um, on this call either, because I don't have any tissue. So please. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Question that I have for you is, so you're a very busy professional how do you manage um, work life and family now? You're all together. Um, how do you reset yourself? So I, I go back to this card and number three was be flexible, right? And so I keep reading all these things on Facebook and all these tips about, uh, you know, blocking time and setting a schedule. And um, I started off doing that and I, I'm getting lots of interruptions. My kids want to come in. And, you know, then I realized that I want to be flexible, right? I want to, I want to be disciplined and I want to block my time. Um, but I want to be flexible because when they come in and they want to talk to me, wow, what a fantastic opportunity that I rarely get because I'm normally in my, my, my work office. And now at my home office, it comes with different interruptions. But, um, I'm still keeping to my normal schedule. I, I'm waking up at 5.30. I, I start my day with prayer and meditation to kind of center myself. Then I allow myself some, uh, some time on social media. Um, and then I do, I go to my home office and I create a, a to-do list that I want to try to accomplish each day. But again, I'm trying to maintain that flexibility. And, and what I know is that a good day is a day where I'm committed to suiting up, showing up, 
and doing the next right thing that's in front of me. And sometimes that next right thing is, is cooking dinner or taking out the trash or hugging my, my child. Uh, or sometimes it's, it's bigger things like, you know, starting a project or a new online class. Um, but I'm kind of a recovering perfectionist and, um, and, and I want to make sure that I'm keeping my expectations in check. So even if I create that to-do list, I'm not going to beat myself up at the end of the day if I haven't accomplished it because I'm, I'm working to be flexible in these times and taking each moment as it comes um, and focused on doing the next right thing. And when I do that, I just find that, you know, I put my head on the pillow at night and, and I can see the gratitude and I can see how it's been a good day regardless of the circumstances. Wow. That's great. I'm over here taking notes. I'm like, you should see my paper. It's notes on both sides. So uh, I am taking a lot of notes. So it's very helpful information, good information too. Um, you know, as a business owner, the leadership wisdom skill, the, you know, the leadership that you have, the role that you have as an owner, um, and it's socially and emotionally sometimes draining, right? Um, the mindset, growth mindset, what are some things that you do as an owner to make sure that um, you know, that sound every day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, here's the reality, right? In real estate, this is typically peak season. So at the beginning of the year, I had, you know, I had goals, I had expectations for this year and, um, you know, those aren't really happening right now. It's, <laughs> it's, it, there's been a certain slowdown and at times I find myself in financial fear like what what's this you know year I've got a kid going to college next year oh my god you know and so what I have been doing and and, and this is great and you know you hear washing your hands to like happy birthday well I've been washing my hands to the serenity prayer and the serenity prayer is is God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference. And if I, if I do that twice and washing my hands, well then great. And because I have to re be reminded of that every single day, every you know, minute of the day practically, um, if I can remember that there's a lot of things that I can't change, um, but there are some things that I can change. And that goes back to that idea of just doing the next right thing. Yeah. Uh, those, I'm responsible for my actions and um, the more that I focus on the serenity prayer, accepting the things I can't change, courage to change the things I can, and then the wisdom to know the difference, I'm in a much better emotional state. And so, you know, that, that flexibility that I talked about, the, you know, the creating the to-do list, doing all these things, but keeping it all framed around the serenity prayer. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's awesome. Um, you know, they always say that the act of anger is a form of fear, right? So as a business owner, a lot of times when we become fearful or angry, it's because of, uh, because of out of that, you know, because of acting out of fear. So that's really, really helpful in the serenity, serenity prayer. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Margaret. Thank you. That was incredible as always. We appreciate um, your words of wisdom. And we wanted to thank everyone for listening to Coffee Talk Moms. You can comment and subscribe or go to coffeetalkmoms.com for a collection of our upcoming videos and hot topics. Thank you. Thanks so Thanks. much, guys. Thanks, Thanks ladies. <laughs>